Hey you guys, Erin here, back with another moon update for you. We are having a full moon coming up this Friday. That would be March 18th at 12.17 a.m. Pacific time. This full moon takes place in the sign of Virgo, the sign of health and being of service. So for those of you who are new to my recordings, what this means is this is the peak of that lunar Virgoan cycle that began approximately six months ago when we had a new moon in the sign of Virgo. So this is a time to look back, think about our growth in Virgoan ways over these last six months. This is also a really good time to think about things that are not serving you, especially if they're applied to this Virgoan energy. This is the moon, the celestial energies will support you in letting go of what is not serving your purpose here, okay? Now, okay, the sign of Virgo, again, it's the sign of health. In fact, the sign of Virgo rules our intestines. It rules our cold, certain parts of our colon and certain parts of our liver. This is definitely not a good idea to be putting uh, junk food or, you know, booze or that sort of thing into our bodies when we, any time that the moon is transiting through the sign of Virgo, but especially when it is a full moon in Virgo, because those parts of our body become more sensitive. Now, also the polarity between Virgo and Pisces, they are opposite each other, rules over the entire immune system. So this is a really good time to be thinking about our health. And we've got Chiron going through Aries. It's a really good time to be responsible for our own health. So these are all things to consider with this full moon in Virgo. Now, Virgo is the mutable earth sign. That's something I love about this energy, that it's mutable, meaning it's very adaptable, but it's also got the earth element to keep it grounded and stabilized there. And also it's ruled by Mercury, which gives it really good intellect. People who have a lot of like really well aspected Virgo energy coming through their natal chart, these people can be highly, highly intel intelligent. They can sometimes, you know, read this incredibly intense and, you know, difficult book and the information just processes in the first time they read it. I really enjoy that about this energy. Now, this is also the sign of the Virgin. It's represented by the Virgin. That has a lot to do with purification. The sign of Virgo is all about purity. In fact, when the sun moves into the sign of Virgo, that's harvest season. That's time to purify the land. In fact, I like to think of this energy as I have a garden, I have fruit trees and, and you know, I grow vegetables and all kinds of things. And when I go out to harvest these things, I'm, I work so hard to grow these things and I'm looking at them thinking, should I wait till tomorrow? Is today okay to pick it? I just want it to be perfect. And that's very Virgoan energy. This energy wants things to be pure and perfect. It's also really got some great organization skills. I used to work on a farm with a lady who, she was a Virgo, but she also had a total of seven planets in Virgo. And she would show up to work every day with her perfectly organized little suitcase, all of her tools in there and an apron. She'd get to work, she'd put her apron on and then, you know, use her own tools. At the end of the day, she'd wipe down her apron and wipe down her tools and put them back all organized into her suitcase and move on. And of course, we both got the job done. I'm over here opposite that as a Pisces, kind of scattered and all over the place. And so I just really looked up to that. I really, I could honor that type of energy. Now, also this sign, again, going back to that purification Purification. This has everything to do with purifying our bodies. This, we are receiving a lot of energies from the heavens that will entirely support purification. In fact, the day after this full moon, I will be starting a cleanse with a really great group of people. If anybody's interested, reach out to me and uh, let me know if you want to join this group and do this detox cleanse with us. But it's really, um, I always work with the moon cycles with you know what i'm putting in my body when we have a new moon a dark moon okay as that moon grows it waxes gets bigger and turns into this full moon as the moon is waxing and getting bigger that's when i nourish my body and then once we have that full moon the moon starts waning and getting smaller that's the time when i you know start to cleanse my body and detox and purify things and so 
following this full moon that rules over our really our entire immune system, this you know, cleansing your body as the moon wanes after this full moon. It's an ideal time for that. Not only that, but two days after this full moon, we have the vernal equinox. We'll be going from the sun is in the sign of Pisces. And I'll show you this stuff. The sun is in the sign of Pisces. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. This energy, it's mystical and it's spiritual and it's wonderful, but it's also very tired. It's it's done. It's the, again, it's at the very end. And two days after this, full moon boom we move into the sign of aries which is the cardinal fire sign and it is ready to go the sign of aries is really kind of represented by 6 a.m time to you know birds start chirping time to get going so this is a really really good time to think about how you want to get motivated and especially if it can be applied and also if it can be applied to how you're being of service okay so let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys and show you some of the details going on for this full moon in Virgo. Okay, so first of all, I work with geocentric Western astrology. Now that said, we put Earth right here in the middle of this thing. This is basically like a snapshot of the heavens at the time of this full moon. And as a side note, just uh, for some of you who know a little bit more about astrology than others, the, if you go to look from your location, you will still see, for example, here is the moon right here, 27 degrees Virgo. And here's the sun at 27 degrees Pisces. They're opposite. Every time we have a full moon, the sun and the moon are exactly opposite each other. They're 180 degrees away from each other. And that will be the case no matter where you are in the world, but they might look like they're in a different spot in this in the zodiac and because that depends on your location so things will still be in the same degree and in the same sign but in a different spot throughout this circle okay so here's the moon right here at 27 degrees virgo and again here's the sun at 27 degrees pisces there's that polarity that rules over the entire immune system so at 27 degrees, Virgo, this puts us in something called the third deacon of that Virgoan energy, which actually gives us a little twist of Taurus energy as well, which is great because Taurus is the fixed earth sign. It stabilizes things. So that can, we've also got the North Node in Taurus, which is great because I feel like that's really kind of our saving grace for keeping some sort of stability here on earth throughout the rest of this year. Um, now, some other things to mention, are these aspects that are going on. You can see that there is this blue triangle right in the middle of the chart here. That is called a grand trine, specifically a grand earth trine, which can be really, really good for this full moon to help kind of keep things on calm. This, um, anytime we have a full moon, things tend to, um, people become more emotional, people become more sensitive to each other's energies. You know, there's a reason why it's called lunatic lunatic okay full moon people become more sensitive to just everything sensitive to energies that sort of thing so keep that in mind but this grand earth trine can help to kind of keep that to a, a little bit more of a calm level um now what this grand trine is connecting is this over here is pluto in the sign of capricorn i've talked a lot about that over the past year or so Pluto really is kind of like the destroyer, okay? And he's going through the sign of Capricorn, which rules over the entire structure of our civilization and also rules over authoritarian establishments. Pluto will reveal secrets. Um, really what he wants to do is create a death and rebirth process. So keep that in mind. The people who are not willing to make change and, you know, <laughs> there's certain things that we can stand up, you know, to uh, for our freedoms, but there's certain things we're literally going through a death and rebirth process here on Earth, not just because of this Pluto through Capricorn. There's other stuff going on as well, um, but this full moon supports that. It's time to kind of like open up and be okay with the change. Things are kind of collapsing in a certain way, and it's time to start to think about developing new growth. And again, this full moon supports that, especially because over here, this is the North Node going through the sign of Taurus, 23 degrees Taurus, which the North Node is where celestial energy comes in to feed Earth, basically, okay? And the sign of Taurus, again, this is that stable, fixed Earth sign. And so this energy coming in through that sign of Taurus can also help to support this 
whole process that we are all going through and help kind of, again, bring some sort of stability to that. Okay, now also, <clears throat> We have got a lot of Pisces energy going on. Now, right here, again, this is the sun at 27 degrees Pisces. Right next to the sun, we've got Neptune at 23 degrees Pisces. Right next to Neptune, we've got Jupiter at 18 degrees Pisces. Now, Neptune and Jupiter are Pisces rulers. Every single zodiac sign is ruled by either one or two celestial bodies, and the sign of Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. That said, this is rare that we're going to have all these things in the sign of Pisces. We are receiving a ton of Piscean energy right now. And to add to that mix, we've now got Mercury in the sign of Pisces, which Mercury kind of rules our consciousness. Now, the sign of Pisces is wonderful. As I mentioned, I'm a Pisces. It's this very spiritual energy. It's very uh, unearthly. It's kind of, it rules the feet. And it basically has one foot in the spirit realm and the other in the earth realm, okay? Uh, people who have a lot of Piscean energy in their natal chart can have this tendency to want to go off into dreamland, feel more comfortable in the subconscious. This energy, again, it's the last sign of the zodiac. It's tired. It's sleepy. It's also kind of, it comes with this delusional energy. It comes with this energy that um, can be easily manipulated. And I am personally, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing people uh, vulnerable to manipulation. I'm seeing them being fooled by things that are on the television, things that are on our TV, our screens, our you know social media screens, that sort of thing. It is so important to pay attention to where we are getting our information from and do our own personal research. And I get it, the sign of Pisces is tired. It doesn't wanna do that. That's the energy that we're receiving, but keep in mind that we are very easily diluted right now. Okay. And that's going to be going on for a little while, but once boom, the sun turns into Aries, that's going to be great. I'll talk about that in a minute for, I'm, I got to talk about this Aquarius energy that's going on before I get into that. So we also have <clears throat> quite a bit of this Aquarius energy going on. This right here is Saturn going through the sign of Aquarius. I love Saturn in Aquarius. The sign of Aquarius is the sign of humanitarianism. We're going into the age of Aquarius. Aquarius rules technology. It rules revolutions. And in fact, the sign of Aquarius is kind of an anti-establishment energy. It's an energy that represents the people for the people. Okay. And Saturn is the one who makes the rules. He brings structure to the game. And I'm seeing here that Saturn is, I, I've mentioned this several times in videos, but I just, I want people to get this message that is so, this is so um, beneficial for the humanitarian groups. This energy really supports getting structured with the humanitarian groups, getting organized, making the plans. And then we've also got Mars right here going through Aquarius now, which Mars brings action. Mars is like, let's go. It is time to do this. And so here's Mars bringing action to the humanitarian groups. And then we've got Venus right here, which is she can soften the energy a little bit. She's also got Venus, even though she's like the influencer of love and romance and relationships, she's also has a strong influence on money and finances. And going through that sign of Aquarius, we're starting to see, I even saw something about how I think the government is trying to um, implement some sort of rules and regulations on cryptocurrencies. I'm not surprised to see that at all, but this is, keep this in mind that that we've got this energy supporting the humanitarian energy, okay? And it's time to take action with that. Now we do have this strong square that's going on between this over here is Uranus and Taurus. I've talked a lot about this. I don't wanna bore people or like, you know, just keep getting repetitive. But for those of you who haven't seen my recordings, Uranus is bringing abrupt revolutionary and technological changes to earth and also to our monetary system. And there is this square going on here. I think there might be some challenges involving that type of energy, but it will be short lived. It won't go on forever. Just continuously focus on that. The structure, try to stay as stable as possible. Now, something else to mention here <clears throat> before I get into that sign of Aries is that for this full moon, we really have like no fire. Okay, all the zodiac signs are either earth, air, water, or fire. We've got a ton of water, we've got a ton of earth, and we've got a ton of air, no fire. Uh, we've got Chiron in Aries over here, which is wonderful, but that's not really 
enough to get that fire going. But what's great is that, as I said, two days after this full moon, in fact, I'll move forward a couple of days here going into March 20th. I gotta go forward a couple more hours. On March 20th, the sun will move into the sign of Aries. Here we go, March 20th. The sun is now at zero degrees Aries. That's that vernal equinox. When we go from this very sleepy sign of Pisces and move in to the action-oriented sign of self, fire sign of Aries. This is a time to get moving, time to get going, time, you know, and I, again, I get it. There's a lot of Pisces energy that's making people tired and sleepy and that sort of thing. But if we set our intentions to work with these celestial energies, they will support us in every way. Okay, so enough of that. Now what I'm going to talk about here are some stones to work with with this full moon. Now, the dedicated zodiacal birthstone for the sign of Virgo is actually a sapphire. Uh, that is one stone that I still do not possess of my own, but that's okay because there's so many other stones that really resonate well with that Virgoan energy. And one of my favorites is a smoky amethyst. It looks like it's dirty, but it's actually just a, a raw piece straight out of the earth of smoky amethyst. What I love about this stone is that it um, can keep protection, but also amplify as well. I've talked a lot about this in videos before. The clear crystal quartz, uh, let's see, this will work. I got a clear crystal quartz angel here. This is wonderful but it's an amplifier. It doesn't really bring much protection. It does some cleansing, but it doesn't offer protection against the unwanted energies unless it's got some help from a darker colored stone, okay? But that's what I love about the really any amethyst or even just smoky quartz. They provide both. And so that's this is a very Virgoan stone and that's why I like to work with it. Now also garnet. Garnet actually works really well with the sign of Virgo. And this would also, <clears throat> and Garnet is a really good one to be kind of sitting with while Pluto finishes up in Capricorn over this next, I think it's another year and a half or so. Now, if I will leave as usual, a full extensive list of Virgoan stones, either in the comments section or the description of wherever you're seeing this recording, it will depend. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is that let's say you do have a sapphire and you have a ton of Virgo energy in your natal chart. Sapphire may not be ideal for you to sit with. It may be overload of that energy. What I always do for all these you know, special moon phases, the new moons and the full moons particularly, is I pull out my journal and I write down for the new moons, I write down what it is I'm trying to manifest, what I want to grow. And with the full moons, I sit down and I write about my growth that I've experienced and also what I am letting go of that's not serving me. And then I'll take my journal and I'll put it on a windowsill that is you know, kind of right in the direction where the moon goes over um, through the nighttime. And I put those stones on top of my journal to help that frequency come in. Everything is vibration. Everything has a certain frequency. And I like to try and harmonize things. And that's really what I'm doing with these stones. Okay, so I think I will leave it at that. If you would like to schedule an astrology reading, again, please do just visit my website, erinwageastrology.com. If you don't see anything available, then you can also just send me, and you know, that doesn't fit for your schedule. I understand people come from different time zones and that sort of thing, so I can be flexible with my business hours. So if you don't see anything that works for you, feel free to send me an email at erinwageastrology at gmail.com. And I do hope to hear from some of you. And until next time, namaste to all of you.